O Lord, your name is everlasting. Your renown, O Lord, endures from age to age. For the Lord gives his people justice and shows compassion to his servants. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive restore and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve in your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. and your glory all the day long. Praise to the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us recite together the antiphons and jubilate. God is the rock of our salvation. O come, let us worship. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands, 
serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. God is the rock of our salvation. O oh, come, let us worship. Let us recite together a portion of the Psalter found in Psalm 89. I love you, O Lord, forever I will sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens, I have made a covenant from my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is your ruler, the Holy One of Israel is our King. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen, may the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In response to the reading from Jeremiah, let us recite together the song of Hannah. My heart exults in you, O God. My triumph song is lifted in you. My mouth derides my enemies, for I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like you, nor any rock to be compared to you, our God. Do not heap up prideful words or speak in arrogance. Only God is knowing and weighs all actions. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the weak are clothed in strength. Those once full now labor for bread. Those who hungered now are well fed. The childless woman was born sevenfold, while the mother of many is forlorn. God destroys and brings to life, casts down and raises up, gives wealth or takes it away, humbles and dignifies. God raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with the rulers and inherit a place of honor. For the pillars of the earth are God's, on which the whole earth is founded. A reading from the letter to the Romans. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are the slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, 
have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life, for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. In response to the Gospel reading, let us recite together the Te Deum. We praise you, O God. We acclaim you as Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come to be our judge. Come then, O Lord, and help your people. 
bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us for our virtual service today. As we reflect back on our gospel lesson, we have a very short lesson, just two verses from Matthew. But I believe this is a very powerful message, and one that is difficult to fully understand by just glancing at it, and we have to dig a little deeper. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. You know, this, this verse is about seeing Christ in every person. And that sounds like such a simple thing to do. But like all simple things, when we practice it, it becomes a little more difficult. As I come to you today, I stand in front of this painting. This particular painting here used to hang in the old chapel of the First Bronson Hospital. And as you look at it, you can see Christ here at the back of the church, radiating out his halo glowing around his head. And then if you look towards the front here, and I know it's difficult to see on camera, but if you look to the front, you can see a whole bunch of people sitting up towards the front of the church. But what you can't see unless you look really close and you meditate on this, is right here in the back of the church, on the ground, is a figure of a person in the shadows. And as you look up, you realize Christ is looking at him. And it reminds me of this verse. What is it like when we start to see Christ in everybody? What is it like for our world today? A world that is hurting. A world that just sometimes won't even stop to listen and talk to each other. What would it be like if we listened to these two short verses and did what Jesus said to us to do? Seeing Christ himself in every person. Can you imagine a world where you walk up and you see that homeless person or that person enraged, angered, and you stopped and said, that's Christ. What would that be like? That would be difficult to do. I know it would be difficult for me to do every time. Sometimes people say things, do things, that make it very difficult to see Christ in them. But if I remember back, I remember Christ walking into the temple and getting upset at the money changers and turning over their tables and then chasing them out of the temple with a whip. And I'm sure those people who were being chased out at the time did not see what we would refer to as Christ in that moment. But that was Christ nonetheless. So, what is it that we're called to do? We're called to welcome everybody. And in doing so, we welcome Christ. And if we're not welcoming somebody... By default, we're not welcoming Christ. Now, that's great in theory, but what does that look like in our day-to-day -day life? It means that we're not perfect. And not every time is it going to be easy to welcome somebody. But we keep trying. 
And the point is not to give up trying and being a little kinder and maybe sitting down and listening to somebody. You don't have to agree with their viewpoint. You don't even have to tell them they're wrong when they bring up something that you disagree with. But if we stop and we listen without talking, without judgment, there in that space, we welcome Christ in. And Christ will be present in the midst of us. And we can grow and we can heal. So think about that. Think about it in your work or your daily life. Think about if you're working, let's say, in a hospital setting such as this. And every person you run into, you stop for a second and say, that's Christ. Rather be a patient, a co-worker, a family member walking down the hallway. If you stopped and seen somebody who looked lost walking down the street and said, that's Christ. And if that's Christ, what do I do? So my friends, how can you see Christ in everybody? Stop for a moment and look. Everybody was looking for Christ in the front of the church, sitting up close to the altar. But Christ was in the back of the church, looking for the man that was forgotten, in the back of the shadows, who was very difficult to see. That is where Christ is at. And even the man in the shadows was looking towards the altar. And my last thought for today is that if someone welcomes you, our gospel tells us that they're welcoming Christ. And that can even be more difficult than seeing Christ in other people. It's seeing Christ in yourself. So, remember, when you go out in the world, people see Christ in you. So show that to the world. Share that light. Share Christ by your actions. Be kind. Be patient. And listen to where the Holy Spirit is guiding us. Amen. Please join in reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Help us, O God our Savior, deliver us and forgive us our sins. Look upon your congregation, Give to your people the blessing of peace. Declare your glory among all the nations and your wonders among all peoples. Do not let the oppressed be shamed and turned away. Never forget the lives of your poor. 
Continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your favor to those who are true of heart. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad in the days of our life. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Grant us so to be joined together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may be made a holy temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Whenever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might re be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. I invite you now to share your own petitions, thanksgivings, and intercessions.
Let us join in reciting the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and positions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.